Hello and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Christine Fenner. This show is about bringing you interesting people and events throughout our community. And I'm excited to introduce Chris Godzilla Taylor from the Madison Media Institute. How are you doing today? Welcome, good, and yourself? I'm doing great, thanks for having awesome. me. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about Madison Media Institute and the programs that you offer there. The programs that we offer at Madison Media Institute are 60 week programs. We have uh, associate's degrees for technical disciplines. So basically, if you can pull it up on the radio, watch it on TV, uh, log into it on the web, somebody like us with some of our disciplines have put it together. So we do uh, graphic design, which is our DAD program, video motion graphics, recording and music technology, game art and animation. We have an entertainment media business degree, independent film, as well as electronic audio visual. Hopefully I didn't leave anyone out, but please forgive me if I did. <laughs> Thank you. And for <laughs> students, is there financial aid available? Yes, there is financial aid available. We do have a financial aid office, and um, that's part of our program that we work with to try and make sure people can achieve their dreams. And how is Madison Media Institute different than other schools you might find in the area? We're different from other schools you might find in the area because a lot of other schools in the area have a product that's education. Education is their primary thing that, that they're pitching and selling. Our primary focus that we're pitching and selling is a student. And as long as we keep the students first and keep the student perspective first, we're placing great products into the workforce. And so a student is our product, and, and, and we want to make sure that people know that whatever technical discipline you need to accomplish, our students are the best job, best people for that position, you know? So that's, that's our focus. That's why we're different. So you mentioned how long your programs are. Again, refresh me with that number. How many weeks of the program? 60 weeks. So 60. It's, it's basically we do a four semester. It's a two-year degree. It's an associate's degree. And I think I might have left out electronic audio visual. Please <laughs> forgive me if I have. So that's this install. We sit in the studio and you start talking about low voltage install and putting things together. That's one of the programs that we have is to do anything from smart buildings to uh, tricked out houses where the TVs come out of the floor. We have a program that actually teaches high-end low voltage install too so I want to make sure I didn't forget that <laughs> and what kind of degrees then do the graduates receive well you have you have an associate's degree in whatever uh, media discipline you choose and we have two baccalaureate degrees which are uh, independent film and entertainment bi media business the EMB degree so for those degrees how long does that take then is that also uh, it's, it's also 60 weeks so wow. you, there are capstone degrees to go on to our uh, initial degrees or our media disciplines. So basically a lot of students come in and say, well, I learned recording, I learned how to make a record, you know, why would I want to take a bachelor's degree? And the reality, the reality is, is that yes, you know how to make a record now, but how do you sell it? You know how to operate a camera, but how do you budget a film? How do you hire personnel? What are the requirements that you have to have for those people? And in 60 weeks it's really a challenge to teach the technical discipline. So to teach the business side of it, we put another two-year degree on top of it. Got it. And do you help with job placements? Yes, we do. We have a phenomenal career services department that actually works with us day in, day out. And I actually work with the department as well to help students get placements. And we do a lot with the online job board as well as career counseling and resume drafts and all of that other stuff. We put a lot of those things together. And what kind of jobs would people get once they're done? Can you give me some, some examples of positions or roles they would take on? Uh, camera operator. Might be one. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, I know that's funny, right? We, uh, we, we do everything from recording engineer. We had a guy just get hired at Disney to do sound design at Disney. Um, you start thinking about video game companies. Some of our students want to go on to code. Um, we have students that will actually do a lot of work on video games, maybe some one-off work, maybe some freelance work. A lot of freelance work leads to a hire. So anytime you, for me as a recording engineer, because that's my discipline, for me as a recording engineer, I'm always thinking about when I turn a video on, I can hear the work that went into it. And it's funny, and this, this will tell you where we're at and where we're not at. You never notice audio or video when it's good. You never think about who put it together when it's good, right? So what I like to say is that our grads are everywhere and you know they're everywhere because you don't notice them, right? <laughs> but when it's bad, <laughs> you know somebody <laughs> messed that audio up or somebody messed that, 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 somebody didn't white balance that, like that wasn't us. 
just that wasn't us. <laughs> and <laughs> before the show, we talked a little bit about some of the other things that you're involved in. We've got about 30 seconds left. Cool. What did you else? What else did you want to mention? I just wanted to say that um, it's been a really good time. I'm on the Madison Arts Commission as vice chair of the Madison Arts Commission. It's it's been a really good ride, and I want to thank the Madison Arts Commission as well as Madison Media Institute. I'm a board member for WYOU. Uh, public Access Television in Madison, as well as a board member for the Madison Area Music Association. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And it, it's been great to learn about Madison Media, Media Institute. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. We'll be right back in just a few moments. Stay sexy, Madison. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I am now talking with Carl Curtis of the Verona Chamber of Commerce. Carl, welcome. Welcome to you. Thanks for having me. All right, well, tell me a little bit about the Verona Chamber of Commerce. Well, the Verona Chamber of Commerce is a business organization. We represent over 300 businesses from Verona proper and communities surrounding Verona. Our area of coverage is actually the Verona Area School District, but anybody who does business in Verona can join the Verona Area Chamber of Commerce. Got it. And how, how does a business become a member? The best way to, to become a member of the Verona Chamber of Commerce is to contact our office and check us out. Well, we don't want to rush anybody into joining the Chamber of Commerce. We'd like to have you come and maybe experience an event in Verona. Uh, the Chamber might hold a, a lecture or a breakfast or an informational meeting. Uh, check us out by calling the office at 845-5777 uh, or sending us a uh, visiting our website and sending us an email. And we'll invite you to one of our events and uh, see what we're about. Do you have regular meetings, uh, monthly events, things like that? We have usually one or two events going on every month. Uh, we have quarterly membership meetings. We have quarterly lunch and learns. We have uh, a lunch that's more informal every month that someone can attend. And then we have all the usual chamber events, golf outings, uh, summer cookouts, holiday parties. The, the key is to bring members together and either inform or, or give them the opportunity to network with each other and create a, a healthy business climate in Verona. Well, one of the events that you have coming up are the Hometown Days, correct? That's correct. So tell me a little bit about Hometown Days. Well, Hometown Days is Verona's annual community festival. It's been going on for 40 years or more uh, since the early 1970s. And this year, the Verona Area Chamber of Commerce will be running it for the first time. So it's a great event for the uh, kick off the summer. It's June 12th through 15th. Uh, it's Father's Day weekend this year. It's a traditional community festival. It's fun for kids. We'll have a parade. We'll have a carnival. We'll have a midway. Uh, lots of fun things. Uh, reptiles, a petting zoo, those kinds of things. Crafts you can do. And of course we'll have our, our bands coming in. Uh, we'll have the Charm School Rejects coming on Thursday night, the 12th. We'll have Madison County coming on the 13th, Friday night. And Cherry Pie, the, the uh, 80s tribute band coming on Saturday night. So it's a great time. There's something for everybody. Great. So it sounds like it's great for families, couples, et cetera. Exactly. Awesome. So how can businesses get involved in the Hometown Days Festival? Well, there's two ways, really. Uh, one, we have a marketplace for smaller vendors who might want to show off what they do. Uh, they can contact the Chamber Office in Verona to inquire about becoming a market vendor at the fairgrounds. And the second thing is to be in the parade. Uh, parade is a great way to market your business, especially to Verona, uh, Verona residents, because uh, they line the streets the entire way. It's several miles of folks who just come in, in droves for this parade. It's a very popular event. And create a float or uh, have a nice car with a sign or, or maybe some other kind of act. Any kind of way to market your business. Uh, the parade and being involved at our fairgrounds are the two great best ways to become involved with the festival. So where are these fairgrounds? Where is the hometown festival being held? Uh, it's at uh, Community Park in Verona. It's at 111 Lincoln Street, which is right behind City Hall. Or if you come in from the east, from Madison, uh, there's some softball diamonds at Community Park, and it's just beyond that. Uh, it's, it's easily accessible. There's plenty of parking, both on the street and in the parking lot, uh, by the ball diamonds. So it's, uh, it's a really easy festival to get to and a fun time. Got it. So you mentioned that there's going to be uh, the bands. You mentioned a few of the reptiles. Can you give some more details about what we're going to see at the Hometown Festival? Well, the it depends on what you're interested in. Uh, there's tons of food. You can tr try any kind of food you really want. There's barbecues. There's some of the best hamburgers 
ever. I don't know if it's just the fairground atmosphere that makes the hamburgers taste so good or, <laughs> or what it is. But uh, we'll have lots of things to do for children especially. We'll have a coin dig, we'll have clowns, we'll have face painting, we'll have a henna artist who will do henna on your, your hands. and uh, We have a reptile exhibit where kids can actually come and touch the snakes and those kinds of fun things if you're a little braver than I am. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, there's the bands in the evening. That's more for the adults. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also working on some other activities like a community-wide beanbag tournament. Uh, there's a softball tournament, which if you want to come watch softball or, or enter your team to play softball, you can do that. So there's just, and then the parade, like I said. The parade's kind of what we wrap up everything with on Sunday, and uh, th that's always fun. There's marching bands, there's uh, uh, classic cars, you name it, there's something in that parade that will catch your eye. Lots of great options. So great to hear. One last question before you go. How sure. does someone become a benefit, or excuse me, a chamber member, and what are the benefits of the membership? Well, the chamber represents and promotes the businesses in Verona and around Verona. It promotes its members. That might be something as simple as introducing a business owner to another business owner who might work well with them. It might be something like advertising. We do a lot of advertising throughout the community uh, in different uh, different media, or it might be something like representing you before the city council. Well, so we do all those things to help members and to become a member. The best way to do is call our office. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's really been great to learn about Verona, and we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I am now talking with Sierra Pope Munoz of the Aldo Leopold uh, Nature Center. Hi, thanks so much for having yes, me. Yes, welcome. So the first thing I want to ask is just simply, what is the Nature Center? Yeah, absolutely. So we are um, we're an environmental education space. We have a system of trails, prairies, woodlands, wetlands, um, and we bring school groups and families and individuals out and get them to experience nature. Why is it so important for children to experience nature? Yeah, um, so we have something these days called what we call the indoor childhood. Um, the average child in the U.S. today spends about 1% of their time out of doors. Um, they can much more easily identify a video game character than basic wildlife. Um, and this is when American Me Medical Association and other studies have shown that being outdoors is really important emotionally and, and physically for children's health. Wow. So what things can you do when you visit the yeah, Nature so Center? Yeah, so we have a visitor center. Um, you can start by looking at some of our habitats indoors, um, what animals and plants you might see. Take a walk on our trails. We have a guided trail hike. Um, and then we have a wonderful climate science exhibit indoors as well to kind of bring that high-tech element into, into the nature experience. Well, you mentioned that we have that you have an event coming up, the Eco Egg Hunt. Right. Yeah. So um, we've got these wonderful family programs about once a month to get people out. And this Saturday from two to four, um, it'll be April nineteenth. Um, we have our Eco Egg Hunt and Sustainable Spring Spectacular. Um, celebrate spring with us. So <laughs> tell me a little bit about the egg hunt and what is the cost and who can, who can come? Sure, absolutely. Um, so the cost is $29 for a family or $25 for members. Um, you can find membership information on our website. Um, individuals, it's $8 or 7 for members. Um, you can learn how to dye eggs naturally with plants and, and things from nature, uh, meet some local farm animals, take a hike on our trails and look for eggs outdoors. It's going to be a really fun time. What time is that going on then? Uh, it's from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on this Saturday, April 19th. And where are you located? So we are at 330 Femrite Drive in Monona. We're just off the Beltline on the Monona exit. So easy it. access for anyone in the, in the area. Absolutely. That's one of the, the best parts of the Nature Center is we're, we're really close to downtown, just off the Beltline, but we are sort of this little oasis of nature right there in the city. Nice. Mm -hmm. And how can folks get involved with the Aldo Leopold Nature Center. Yeah, so we'd love it if folks just come out and, and come out for a visit. Um, we're open seven days a week. Um, you can learn about the site and take a walk on the trails. Um, you can also visit our website, aldoleopoldnaturecenter.org, and get information about membership and upcoming programs, anything like that. Uh, you mentioned that you have a lot of different events. About every month you have yeah. a different event. Tell me a little bit about some of the events that you offer throughout the year. And, yeah, and we just, um, just last month we had my personal favorite, which was our maple syrup fest, which was a way um, to learn how, you know, we get that delicious maple syrup from maple trees. We had a wonderful turnout, beautiful day. Um, next month we'll have a guided wildflower hike. Um, early May is a great time to see the first woodland wildflowers. Um, in June we have a, a fishing program. Just really all 
different, different themes throughout the year to get families and individuals outdoors and, and experiencing and enjoying nature. And do schools also connect up with you as well to get their yeah. kids out there? Absolutely, in yeah. So um, we have programs for K through 12, um, wonderful guided programs that are correlated with the curriculum units in schools. So teachers can bring their kids out and you know learn about insects or trees or the pond or whatever they're studying in school. So anything that's nature related is really what you discuss. Basically, yeah, and we can, you know, whatever season it is, there's something fantastic to learn about. So you can find animal tracks in the snow in the winter or, you know, learn about maple syrup, learn about wildflowers, um, bluebirds, anything throughout the year. We can we can engage people and students in the public with nature somehow. Got it. So tell me a little bit more about uh, what you're hoping throughout the I guess what has happened over the past 20 years yeah that how have things changed yeah so we started out as just a small space a shed in a greenhouse um, we had four programs one for each season um, and now we've really grown we expanded to add this wonderful climate science facility we have what we call high tech meets high touch so that sensory exploration of nature and then you come in and look at our our, our computers and our touch screens and and kind of bring it all together. Um, so we've expanded a, a ton. We've got from four programs 20 years ago, we have over 70 programs now that we do for um, K through 12 students and all of our wonderful family programs, like I mentioned too. Wow, and do you have a growth plan moving forward? Do you have yeah, absolutely. We we want to continue. We have um, a great, uh, couple of great efforts right now where we have something called the Blue Marble Project where um, we're working on building our immersion theater to have people be able to look at outer space and planets far away to kind of give them a, a better sense and perspective of our one planet and how we have to protect it, you know, our, our planet here on Earth. So. And how did this all get started 20 years ago? Yeah, so um, Aldo Leopold was um, a, a famed ecologist from the area, um, and there's the Aldo Leopold Foundation in Baraboo. Um, but basically all around southern Wisconsin, he had written a lot about nature and, and local nature and how how you can be involved with it. Um, and so we had this, this space 20 years ago with a, a prairie, a small pond, um, and we just... Um, built it and, and had a way to get kids in, engaged. Well, what a great program for, for kids if they're going yeah. to come to the Eco Hunt this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a, uh, have a great day <laughs> and we'll be right back in just a moment. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm now talking with Sean Flyman of West Corporation. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, I'm glad to be here. So tell me first of all, what is West Corporation? What is it that you do? Well, uh, West is a global organization. We uh, were founded in 1986 and headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska, but our Madison relationship dates to about uh, December 2008. Uh, we actually opened our doors with 15 sales associates and we now have over 400. And uh, the way it works is that our inside sales partners come to us when they have a, a sales challenge of some sort. It might be a um, gap in coverage, it might be a um, speed to market challenge, or an overall cost of sales um, issue. And we build inside sales teams to help them overcome those challenges and help them to uh, create demand for their products and uh, to gain uh, additional market share. So what trends are shaping the market right now? Well, um, there are quite a few. Uh, in the healthcare space, uh, in particular, the uh, Affordable Care Act is um, really reshaping the market. So you have um, the uh, excise tax on medical devices. Uh, the medical device manufacturers are now looking for ways to recoup some of those costs. And uh, West is a valuable asset for them because we can deploy uh, sales teams more economically, typically, than uh, field sales. Um, additionally, you have um, a flood of newly insured into uh, the market. You know, these are um, in large part um, younger uh, individuals. Um, oftentimes they see themselves as very healthy and they're taking out um, very high deductible, uh, low premium policies and really treating them more like um, a catastrophe policy. So they're only planning on using these policies if they have extended illness, hospital stays. So as a result, the shift is um, really away from how you treat illness to how you prevent illness. So it's a, it's a major shift for us. Okay, and how can people in, that are interested in some of these roles contact you? 
Well, the easiest way to reach us is on our website at www.westemployment.com, and uh, from there you can fill out an application online or you can uh, choose to communicate directly with our Human Resources Department. And then outside of healthcare, what other trends are you seeing in the marketplace? Yeah, well, um, you know, holistically, the the way that um, people are buying is is changing. You know, it used to be that um, the information was controlled by the seller. If you wanted to find out about a product, you went to uh, the seller to find out about the features of the product. You know, with the um, uh, availability of information and the um, multiple channels that are emerging uh, continuously now. Uh, information is readily available. Um, I don't want to say the sellers are obsolete, but oftentimes they are being pushed to uh, the very end of the buying process to where they're just completing the transaction. So the challenge now for uh, sellers is to really reinvent themselves and to make themselves relevant again and uh, insert themselves earlier in that sales process once again where they can you know, somewhat influence the buyer. Okay, and tell me a little bit about some of the industries outside of healthcare that you work in or that you're specifically seeing a lot of growth in. Yeah, absolutely. So in, in addition to healthcare, um, our financial services vertical is booming as well as uh, telecommunications. So what that means for our sales associates is you know, you're going to speak to uh, physicians, pharmacists, um, hospital directors, uh, small business owners, uh, all the way up to CEOs of global organizations. Wow. And how does West make a difference in the Madison area? Well, we've been very blessed uh, to be here, and, and uh, we take a lot of pride in being able to give back to the community. Uh, last year, we hosted a um, silent auction for the Boys and Girls Club of Dane County. Uh, in addition, uh, we uh, financially supported uh, Porchlight, which is an organization founded to help the homeless, as well as uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which um, supports terminally ill children in Wisconsin. Great. So a lot of oppor lot of lot of benefit you're bringing to our community. Absolutely. Fantastic. And uh, I guess one other question is, uh, what should people do um, if they're interested in, in working with you? Um, is there a specific industry that you'd want to target, or are you looking at yeah. having people contact you no matter where they're at? Well, um, we employ a, a wide variety of. Um, individuals with sales experience, right? So if you are just looking to get into a career in sales, um, it's a great place to start. We have entry-level sales positions. If you are um, a seasoned healthcare sales individual, we'd love to talk with you. If you have uh, banking experience, um, lending, mortgage, um, that's a great fit for us as well. Um, interestingly, th uh, three of my current vice presidents um, started in, in entry-level sales positions, so there's wow. a tremendous amount of growth. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today and introducing us to your corporation. And thank you for joining us on Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Christine Fenner. We'll see you next week.